In this video, we'll be showing you how to install our Stage 5 audio system on select 2020 and newer Jeep Gladiator JT. Welcome back guys, I'm Eric, and today we'll be installing the 20 Gladiator Stage 5 on a 2023 Jeep Gladiator with bass audio. To make things easier, we suggest some specialty tools such as a 90 degree drill, a 90 degree hand driver, an assortment of fillet bits and extensions, a scoop panel puller, seven millimeter wrench and socket, and compact ratchet set. Now, with all Rockford Fallsgate kits, we design for a plug and play install. However, we consider this a five out of five wrench installation, purely based on the amount of vehicle disassembly and reassembly needed, including removal of the passenger airbag. So if you're hesitant, and we understand why, we highly recommend contacting your local authorized Rockford Fosgate dealer to install the system for you. All right, now that we covered that, let's jump right into the install. We'll start by disconnecting the grounds from the primary and the start-stop battery using a 10 millimeter socket. Now, depending on your configuration, you may have two large cables on the negative or one large cable on the primary battery and one large cable on the ground lug. Now, be sure to remove the positive terminal as well. Now we'll be removing the front and rear roof of our Jeep. In our installation, we'll be doing this strictly for video clarity. Now this isn't required, but it is recommended to make the install easier, so it will require some extra hands. Unlatch the driver's side first, then remove it from the vehicle. Then unlatch the passenger side and remove it as well. To remove the rear top, remove all the bolts using a T50 Torx. Be sure to disconnect any harnessing and tubing for the back window. Now we're ready to remove the factory jack to prep for relocation. To get started, remove the jack from the factory location by unstrapping the Velcro and loosening the set screw. Now remove four screws from the cargo hold using a T40 Torx. Next, remove two screws from the bolt carrier using a 10 millimeter socket and a T25 Torx to remove two screws from the seat belt trim. To retain your factory jack, we've included a kit to relocate this from under the rear passenger seat to behind the rear driver's seat. Fold down the rear seat and remove the factory rubber mat. We've included a template to determine where to cut it. Position the template and use an X-Acto knife or scissors to cut the mat. Now we're ready to install the jack in the new location behind the seats. To get started, remove two screws using a 10 millimeter socket. Using the jack relocation standoffs and bolts from the blister pack, secure two standoffs onto the threaded studs. Insert the jack bracket in place and use a 3 16 Allen to secure the long threaded screw along with the diamond shaped washer on each side. Once you're done, replace the rubber mat, then place the jack and tool kit in the housing to strap it down. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're ready to prepare our subwoofer enclosure for installation under the rear seats. Start by removing all the remaining hardware from the blister pack. Then remove the contents from the OEM bolt holder bin. Prepare the subwoofer enclosure by loosely installing the main brackets with a 532nd Allen. Note that the brackets are labeled driver and passenger. With our new subwoofer enclosure, we've included a spot that integrates your OEM bolt holder from underneath the rear seats. To get started, Insert the rubber boot and OEM bolt holder bin into the enclosure. Using the shorter screw, insert the cropped washer and lightly secure it into the threaded insert by hand. Now, insert the cropped washer on the longer screw into the other hole. Flip the enclosure up and insert the larger washer with the rubberized surface facing the enclosure. Use an eight millimeter socket to secure the nut and screw. Tighten the screw using a 532nd Allen and replace the foam insert and cover. Now we're ready to install the subwoofer enclosure under the rear seats. To get started, remove the bolts from under the rear seat using an E14 or a 12 millimeter on both driver and passenger sides with an impact wrench. Now once they're removed, carefully slide the enclosure into place being careful of the brackets. Route the subwoofer harness around the seat belt and toward the driver's side. Then secure the two E14 bolts on each side along with the four bracket screws using a short 532nd Allen wrench or socket. Now we're ready to remove the Jeep cage trim panel from the vehicle. If your top is on, use a 90 degree hand driver and a short T25 Torx. Starting on the driver's side, remove 9 screws using a T25. Then move to this passenger side and remove 9 more screws. Finally, move to the middle and remove the last three screws. Starting on the passenger front side, remove the panel by pulling it first from the back. Now you may need a plastic pry tool. Use the same process on the passenger rear. Now move to the driver's front and remove the panel. Once done, move to the driver's rear and remove it as well. Now we're ready to remove the factory equipped soundbar. Start by removing the dome light using a pry tool and disconnect the harness. Unsnap the center panel and two outside panels. Disconnect the soundbar harness, then the light harness Christmas tree. Finally, remove six 10 millimeter bolts and detach the soundbar. All right, let's move to the front and remove those factory tweeters. Start by removing the tweeter grills using a scoop pry tool. Do not use the leather as leverage to prevent damage. 
Then use a 90 degree driver to remove two Phillips screws and a pick tool to detach the harness. Once you're done, repeat the process on the passenger side. Okay, let's start removing the dash assembly. Now we'll break this up into multiple sections to make it easier. Start by removing the knee panel by pulling up from the bottom. Be sure to retain any clips as you'll need these for reassembly. Next, remove the AC controls starting at the bottom left corner and detach two harnesses from the panel. Now, Detach the radio trim by removing two screws under the radio with a 7mm or a number 2 Phillips. Then lift from the bottom to detach the trim panel. Now we're ready to remove the radio from the dash. Get started by unscrewing four Phillips screws and pull the radio out. We recommend taking a photo of the back of the radio before disconnecting any harnesses to help with the reassembly. Now we're ready to remove the upper dash. Start by removing one center screw and begin pulling on the driver's side, being careful not to scratch the leather. Then move to the passenger side. Some of the clips may remain in the dash, so it's very important to save them when you reassemble the vehicle. You can pull them out from the front or from the back. Just be sure to reclasp the teeth on the clips so it's easier during the reinstallation process. Now we're ready to remove the media panel from the center console. Start by putting a protective cloth over the shifter. Remove one screw from the center and detach the panel. Now once again, we recommend taking a photo before detaching all the harnesses. The main harness requires unlatching a red pin. Now let's remove the trim around the speed cluster. Unscrew four Phillips, then carefully, without scratching the cluster, pull from the bottom tack and speed controls to remove the trim bezel. Now we're ready to remove the kick panel. This requires us to loosen and remove some of the lower dash subframe. To get started, remove the floor mat, then the small upper kick panel by pulling it out. Unclip the harness by unlocking the red pin, then unlatch the lock that holds the harness in place. Finally, remove the door hinge from the bracket. To remove the kick panel, remove a 10 millimeter nut. Use a pry tool to detach the harness and several clips that hold the panel in place. Push the panel near the door frame to decouple it and remove it from the vehicle. Now we're ready to disassemble the lower dash subframe to access the front speaker enclosure. To get started, you'll need to remove seven screws, including one hidden under the steering wheel bezel. Next, pop off the side panel using a pry tool, then detach the trim panel by removing six more screws, two of them requiring a seven millimeter or ratcheting wrench. Detach the panel, then slide the pin to unlatch and disconnect the harness.
Now you can remove the module using a Phillips screwdriver. Once removed, you can disconnect the harness. Then, detach the speaker pod by using a 7mm socket on the side. Let's continue on with our disassembly. Using an 8mm socket, remove two screws from the horizontal and upper vertical bracket. Then use a 10mm socket to remove two more screws from the right side of the horizontal bracket. Next, remove three Phillips screws tucked up on the right side of the driver's panel. Now we're ready to access and remove the driver's front speaker enclosure. Pull the subframe assembly out of the way to start removing the speaker pod. Disconnect all harnesses and remove the pod from the lower dash. Now we're ready to remove the glove box and the airbag. Start by removing the grab bar cover with the pry tool. Remove two 10 millimeter bolts with an impact driver. Remove the glove box from the vehicle by unlatching the hinge on the left side and pulling down on the back center tab. To remove the airbag, detach the airbag cover plate with the pry tool using a shop rag to prevent damage to the dash. Next, remove six 7mm screws from the upper air handler. Then remove two 13mm bolts from the underside of the airbag. Reach up and carefully detach the yellow airbag cable that's hard to see. Then remove the airbag assembly from the vehicle. Now it's very important to reattach this yellow harness during the reinstallation process. Now we're ready to remove the passenger speaker pod. First, detach the side panel, then remove 17 7 mm screws to loosen the passenger side dash. Pull the passenger panel back by pulling out and away from the pins. Next, remove one 7mm screw with a socket and two upper and lower 7mm screws holding the speaker pod in place. Disconnect the speaker harness and remove the pod from the dash. If your vehicle is not equipped with a factory amplifier like our base audio system, you can skip to the next section. However, if your system is equipped with a factory amp like we had in another vehicle, we'll show the steps needed to remove it. In that vehicle, the amplifier was located under the driver's dash. We disconnected a Christmas tree harness that's in the way. Then remove three 8mm bolts two on the top and one on bottom from the underneath. We disconnected three harnesses and removed the amplifier. Now we'll remove the driver's seat in preparation for our new amplifier installation. Start by removing the headrest by depressing the clips, then Tape the threshold to prevent any scratches around the door jamb. Use an E12 or a 10 mm to remove four seat bolts. Lift the seat up to disconnect two Christmas trees. One will be on the power harness with a red retaining clip and the other will be a yellow airbag harness. Place a blanket over the door to protect it, then remove the seat. Now you may need to adjust the steering wheel to get the seat out. All right, we finished disassembling the Jeep. So now we're ready to install our new system. We'll go ahead and get started with the sound bar. Now it's a great time for a second set of hands to help you attach it. 
Position the sound bar by threading six screws in by hand, then securing them with the 10 millimeter socket. Now once it's in place, plug the sound bar harness in and replace the Christmas tree. All right, now that that's done, you can replace the roll bar trim panels using a T25, then plug in the dome light and snap it back into place. Now we're ready to install our new tweeters, noting that the tweeter bezels are keyed to fit. First, connect the driver's crossover and position the tweeter in place. Use two seven millimeter screws to secure the tweeter. Now once you're done, repeat the process on the passenger side. All right, let's take a second to prepare our new speaker pods. Here's the OEM pod and our new pod. We'll need to relocate the module from the OEM pod to the new one using a seven millimeter socket. The driver's pod and passenger pod have three mounting locations and we need to pre-drill the side mounting hole using the factory Phillips screws. Now we're ready to install our passenger speaker pod. Carefully pull the panel out and attach the speaker harness. Insert the speaker pod and secure it using three seven millimeter screws. One that's on top, one that's on the bottom, and one that's on the side. For the side screw, you can also use a little tape to keep the screw attached to the socket. RTA harness allows you to integrate the new audio system into the factory electrical system without cutting or splicing any wires. Starting on this end, we have the T harness in and output connections. Then three more harnesses. This one is for the DSP. One labeled base audio only is for systems without a factory amp that connect to the output of our new amp rack and one is for the CAN bus. If your system is factory equipped with an amplifier, you'll also need this harness. This end connects to the factory amplifier harness, but instead of using the T harness labeled base audio, you'll connect this end to the output of the new amp rack. Now, if you have an aftermarket radio, you'll use the harness labeled aftermarket instead of the T harness. This end connects to the front and rear RCA outputs from the radio and this end is for connection to our digital signal processor. All right guys, now we're ready to install our T-harness. First, insert the T-harness into the dash, then route the DSP section toward the driver's side between the dash panel and the subframe. 
route the bass audio analog harness the same way. Route the CAN bus harness to the passenger side and connect it to any open slot in the green CAN bus bar. Now, if all the spots are occupied, the harness has a built-in pass-through. Finally, attach the female T-harness connector to the factory radio harness. Our new amp rack comes pre-mounted with a 4-channel and subwoofer amplifier that are pre-tuned from the factory. Now this bundle is for the amplifier's signal input and speaker outputs. This bundle is for the amplifier's power and sub output. And this is the amplifier's ground cable. Our power cable comes with a pre-installed grommet that replaces the factory one. Now we're ready to install our amp rack under the driver's seat. To get started, use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the grounding bolt. Find the mounting stud behind the carpet and make an L-shaped cut. Now, remove the mounting bolt attached to the harness channel and pull the plastic channel away from the mounting stud. Position the amp rack in place on both mounting studs. Place the plastic channel over the amp bracket and secure it using a 10 millimeter socket. Route the ground cable to the right side and secure it using a 10 millimeter socket. Make sure the brackets align with the seat belts and tighten both down. Route the amplifier's output harness to the center console area. Next, route the subwoofer harness to the rear of the vehicle and make your connection to the subwoofer. Once you're done with that, route the power cable along the internal running board toward the front of the vehicle. Now we're ready to route the power wire. Remove the grommet next to the brake booster by twisting it off clockwise. Our vehicle's existing grommet was occupied with aftermarket accessories, so we removed the grommet from our harness and routed it through the existing one. Please note, manual transmission models don't have a grommet hole, so you'll need to drill a 3 quarter inch hole using a step-up bit in the upper corner of the driver's side. Route the power cable under the washer fluid reservoir and across to the battery. Zip tie the harness next to the brake booster, then from the blister pack, use three edge clips with zip ties inserted vertically. Secure the harness and cut the zip ties. Now we're ready to install the fuse holder assembly. Remove the fuse cover and use a 532nd Allen to slightly loosen the set screw. Then, insert the Allen or needle nose pliers into the open end of the fuse block to remove the plastic insert. Now once that's done, completely insert the ferrule into the fuse holder and tighten the set screw. Then, replace the fuse cover. Now, remove two 10mm bolts from the upper firewall that we'll use to secure the fuse holder assembly. Position the bracket and reinstall the two 10 millimeter bolts to secure it in place. Now do not reconnect the battery cables yet. Some models like the diesel have different battery arrangements under the hood. Now in this case, you would remove the fuse holder from the bracket using an Allen wrench and manually mount it in the engine compartment. Before we install our digital signal processor, let's cover a few things. If your vehicle is equipped with a factory amplifier, you'll use the existing hardware to mount the DSP in the amplifier location. If you don't, we provided hardware for you in the blister pack. The DSP comes preloaded with the Jeep specific tune, and we've included a USB extension for future servicing if needed. 
Now before we install the DSP, make sure that the input level switch is set to low. Now we're ready to install the digital signal processor. To get started, route the remote level control cable down the center dash and to the driver's side where the DSP will be located. Then check the length for connection to the knob. Now, orient the DSP and make all your input connections for CAN bus, input harness, and mini USB cable. The mini USB cable will be accessible through the kick panel access door. Now, once you're done, flip the DSP around and make your connections for the remote level and the output harness. Start your wiring cleanup using the provided zip ties. Connect the blue remote turn on as this connection is very important. Now we found that finishing wire management as shown allows for better fitment. Before mounting, you may need to unseat a factory harness that might block your installation. Position the DSP so you're facing the back. Then insert and secure the two upper and one lower bracket bolts. If using the existing hardware from the factory amp, use an 8mm socket. If using the included hardware from the blister pack, use a 3 8 inch socket. Now we're ready to make our amplifier connections. If you have a factory amp, you use this harness to connect to the speaker outputs, and this end connects to the factory amp wiring. On our base audio system, we use the connectors from the T-harness labeled base model and connect those to our new amp outputs. Both conditions allow us to use the factory wiring as power delivery for all the speakers. Now let's install the driver speaker pod. Start by orienting the pod and connect the factory harness to the relocated module on the back. Then connect the speaker harness. On our Gladiator, the customer used an aftermarket brake controller, so two of the factory harnesses were already relocated. Install the pod using three 7mm screws, one on the top, one on the bottom, and one on the side. Now let's take a moment to understand the remote level control that will be used to operate your base level. If you have a factory equipped brake controller, then the standalone PLC2 would need to be purchased and installed under the knee bolster. Let's get started by prepping the surface area with a microfiber cloth to prevent any scratches. Insert the removal tool into the 12 volt accessory plug and align it with the inner tabs. Once depressed, pull the inner sleeve out then use the tool to depress the three other outer tabs and remove the assembly. Now, start by orienting the remote level control in the proper position. Use an 11 millimeter to remove the center nut. Carefully remove the magnet registration plate, noting the alignment pins. Find the alignment tab and position the knob underneath the panel. Replace the magnet registration plate and secure using the 11 mm nut. Be certain to turn the potentiometer all the way down counterclockwise. Align the front knob with the indicator line and press it into place.
Now that we have that done, let's look at the 12 volt relocation kit. Remove the included template, the 3 8 inch drill bit, and the 20 millimeter hole saw from the kit. Position and score each location on the back of the glove box with the drill bit. Remove the template and complete your holes. Use your template to determine where the hole saw should be used, then drill your hole. Remove the hardware from the blister pack and prep the washers on the screws. Insert the 12 volt assembly into the glove box and use a 2.5 millimeter Allen to secure three screws. If you need an additional 12 volt line, we've included a T harness for the connection. Let's head over to the Jeep and route the 12 volt T harness toward the center dash and plug it into our factory harness. This will be plugged into the glove box during final assembly. All right, now we're ready to reassemble the vehicle. We'll start by reattaching the panels in the reverse order using the factory hardware. Now, you may need to scrub back through this video to reacquaint yourself with the process. Pay special attention when reattaching the airbag because failure to connect the yellow harness and properly install it can result in error codes. When assembling the factory media accessory panel and the glove box, be sure to attach the RJ45 cable to the base knob and the 12 volt outlet harness to the glove box.
Now you're ready to make your battery connections. Connect the start, stop, and main battery negative cables. Then attach the power cable from our fuse to the positive terminal. Finally, connect the positive terminal and close the hood. Now we're ready to initialize the audio system. This is a very important step to ensure the DSP tune is properly loaded. For base audio systems, lock and unlock the vehicle. Get in the vehicle and close the door. Make sure the emergency brake is off. With your foot on the brake, push the start stop button twice to enter run mode. Pull the emergency brake up, then push the brake down, then back up again. You will hear one honk from the horn. Activate the left turn signal by pressing the lever down, at which you should hear the horn honk one time. This confirms the DSP tune has been loaded. The horn will chirp two more times to confirm the radio is initializing program sequence into low level output mode. Now do not open any doors or turn the vehicle off as the radio will reset and cycle twice automatically. Now for premium audio, press the key fob twice to lock the vehicle. Let the vehicle sit uninterrupted for around 20 minutes. Now be sure to take the key fob into your house away from the vehicle. Once the initialization is complete, you'll see the backlight on the base level control turn off. Now you can unlock the vehicle and open the doors. Now we're ready to test our new Jeep Audio system. Now you can adjust the base level to your preference. Once you're done, continue reassembling the vehicle by installing the front and rear roof on the Jeep. As you can see, that installation took some time, but it came together pretty well. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact our technical support at 1-800-669-9899 or through live chat at the bottom of our website at rockfordfallsgate.com. Until next time, we'll see you soon.